Welcome to the Bursar's Office webinar. Thank you for joining us to learn about the services the Bursar's Office provides to students and parents. I am Teresa Schmidt, the University Bursar, and joining me today are Waynette, Christian, and Brandon. This webinar will be recorded in order to post on our website for future reference. Our, all participants have been muted for the duration of the webinar along with the video disabled except for the presenters. Please post any questions that you have through the Q&A feature. We will respond to questions at the end of the presentation. Waynet will now preview our website, along with providing you with important financial information pertaining to your student account. Welcome everyone. Welcome to the, web, uh, the Bursar's Office webinar. Let's begin. To put it simply, the Bursar's office collects payments for tuition, fees, and housing. It's really that simple. When you register for your classes, these charges will appear on your student account along with a due date. If you are a financial aid recipient through the financial aid office and you accept your loan, the amounts will be posted to your student account approximately eight to 10 days before the start of classes. If you choose not to accept part or all of your loans, then your student account will not will be credited, will not be credited with those loan payments. If however you are awarded a grant, grants are posted automatically to your account. If you have any questions regarding your financial aid, uh, please contact the Financial Aid and Scholarship Office. Other email addresses FAO at SJSU sjsu.edu. That was the simplified version. Let's give you a little bit more context. Um, please note that all of the information I'm going to share with you is readily available in our website. I acknowledge that in the next two weeks, you'll be receiving a lot of information. It may be difficult to remember every single detail. By browsing the website together, I, I can give you an overview and when the time comes, you'll know how to get the information you'll need. Here is our homepage. The most frequently used services have prominent tiles for easy access. The, more, the navigation bar right on top, right below our name, represents the audience type, information groupings with the same goal of easy access. Over under fees and due dates, you'll find tuition and other fees in order to show you the basic registration fees for the fall 2021. The dollar amount of your basic tuition depends on the number of units you registered for. If you register up to six units, that is considered part-time and you'll see a charge of 1,665 plus mandatory fees after you register. If you registered for 6.1 or higher, making you a full-time student, then you will see a 2,871 tuition charge plus other fees. Payment due dates for the fall 2021, if you hover over fees and due dates, um, you will be able to access this page. Your payment due date will depend on your registration date. People are spread out you know, in a few weeks, so pay attention to when your payment due date. The fall semester registration period is May 12 through August 16. This table will help you determine when your payment deadline is. For instance, if you register anywhere between May 12 and June 30, your payment due date is July 6. It's about a month from the earliest registration date. The most important thing to remember about payment due dates is that the university doesn't send out bills or invoices. It is the student's responsibility to keep track of these dates. Payment reminders will be sent out, but not invoices. Unfortunately, if payments are not paid in a timely manner, enrollment cancellation process may be triggered. 
let's head over to payments and refunds. If financial aid does not apply to you or you wish to pay off your fees over a period of time, the installment payment plan is a service that we administer. There are basically two types of uh, two plan options. One covers tuition, campus, and non-resident fees. And the second option is purely for housing. Here are the key points about this service. If you opt into one of these plans, you will be charged a $35 fee. Or if you choose both, then it will be a charge of $70. Due dates are also posted on the bursar's office website and it is the responsibility of the student to keep track and be able to, payment, to pay on time. Invoices are not sent at all. The IPP payment due dates are also in the same table as the fall payment due dates. I should also point out that the sooner you opt into an IPP, if that's what you're going for, you'll have the advantage of splitting your payments into four installments. So the earlier you do it, the better, uh, the easier it is to break it down. We highly recommend making payments on time. And the number one reason is to avoid enrollment cancellation. One procedure to be aware of is enrollment cancellation. Enrollment cancellation is activated for non-payment, late, or partial payments. It would be best to avoid the situation since a healthy number of classes are in high demand and losing your place in an impacted class can affect your ability to graduate on time. After EC, late enrollment is possible, but it may incur additional fees and with no guarantee of reclaiming your place in class. It is key that one monitors the payment due date. Again, payment reminders may be sent, but it is still a best practice to check your student account on a regular basis. Um, as a personal suggestion, consider using a Google Calendar or Smart Home Hub reminder, doing so well ahead of the business of classes and not amidst of it. Stay ahead of the deadlines. Um, you wouldn't want to be in that point of urgency when you probably have a full plate at that point in the semester. So planning in advance can only help you manage your responsibilities. Additionally, students wishing to partially drop or withdraw from all classes must do so by following the university policies and procedures. You are still financially responsible for tuition charges even if you choose not to attend classes. Let's head over to how to make payments. The university accepts the following payment methods. Um, E-check from traditional US-based banking institutions are accepted. There is no service charge, but you'll need to keep your routing and your account number information from your checking account handy for this option. Second option is credit card payments, namely Visa, MasterCard, American Express, and Discover are accepted. However, they do come with a non-refundable 2.75 service charge. For our international students, international wire transfer or international credit cards are options you can utilize through Flywire. Next option would be the 529 savings plan. We also accept prepaid college savings plan and the step-by-step -step how to pay online guide contains a list of US states. Waivers, sponsorships, and third-party billing are also accepted. CalVet is an example of a waiver. And in some cases, students are sponsored by government agencies and organizations. All of these payment methods are processed online. And for step-by-step -step instructions, uh, check out the how to, pay, how to Pay Online tutorial at the help desk. Here is a link over here, and there's one on top on how we can help in under help tutorials as well. Refunds occur when you have excess funds after your financial aid has been applied toward your tuition and fees, or when you or your parents and guardians pay for classes, then you adjust your schedule. You may be eligible for a refund. 
The amount will depend on when you drop your classes or change your status from full-time student to part-time student. In both of th these situations, funds need to be returned to you. We would like to emphasize the importance of signing up for direct deposit or electronic refunds. You can locate the sign up, sign up tile for direct deposit on the homepage right here. Direct deposit is a faster and safer and more environmentally friendly alternative to having paper checks prepared and mailed to you. When you sign up for direct deposit, you can receive your check up to a week earlier compared to a paper check recipient. The sign up instructions, like I mentioned, is right here. The next topic I'd like to go over is FERPA and authorization for release. An acronym we'd like you to be familiar with is FERPA. It is short for Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. This policy protects the privacy of student records. University staff are required to follow this policy and that means we are allowed to discuss student accounts with the student. However, students may want to grant their parents or guardians access to the account, whether to check on records or pay fees. In case students, um, in this case, students are required to submit an authorization to for release located here, located here on this page, authorization to release, as well as the, on the home page right at the bottom, the fifth tile. Next up would be the student ID or tower card. Another important service we provide is the tower card, also known as your student ID. Matriculated degree seeking students are issued an SJSU tower card at no cost. The current contactless process is to upload your tower ID card picture in advance. We request that you submit a color, professionally quality photo at mysjsu.sjsu, I'm sorry, myid.sjsu.edu or that's myid.sjsu.edu. Or if you prefer, you can make an appointment to stop by the bursar's office to have your picture taken. The key points to remember are the tower card is a necessity in order to access buildings and SJSU services. And when you opt in for an in-person photo, an appointment is required. And when you come in, please present a valid state driver's license, DMV state ID, passport, or other government issued photo ID at the bursar's office. That's the basic overview of our website and the services we offer. Let's say in a few days or weeks from now, you're stumped, how do you get help? Contact us page is on the far right side. We hope this overview is helpful, but in case you have any questions or simply need more information beyond this webinar, we offer several ways to contact us. Urgent inquiries can contact us via phone or chat. The hours of operations Operation are listed here. Our chat hours actually has been expanded to accommodate different time zones. Here is our URL once more for reference. And in this situation, you cannot recall our URL or may have forgotten our department name. Hop onto the SJC homepage search bar. You can type in you can type in Bursar or Bursars with the S at the end. You can even type in student account or cashier, and you'd be able to locate us that, as, that way as well. Thank you for attending our webinar today. We hope you found this information very beneficial. Please feel free to visit our website as much as you need to to answer any questions you may have. Um, you can also email us or contact us at this if you have additional questions. We look forward to answering all your financial questions that may arise. Have a great evening.